Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Night Face, bringing you my John Wick Chapter Three Parabellum review. So the first five minutes will be non-spoiler, as I always do, give you my spoiler-free thoughts and rating. And then after the five-minute mark, we're gonna dive into spoilers. So yeah, I was so looking forward to this film. Uh, it, was, it was actually one of my most anticipated films of the year because I've been loving the. John Wick series, you know, the first two films I really love. I love the first one the most because it had more of that dramatic weight. The sequel was great as as well. Uh, and I enjoyed this one just as much, if not more than the second one. Oh, man. Th these movies are the prime example how you should shoot, direct, and just choreograph your action sequences. And the stunt work, just bravo, kudos to the entire cast and crew and team involved in making this just amazing, just jaw-dropping like action. Just like how the Mission Impossible franchise has continued to excel and top themselves with action choreography and stunt work. John Wick is up there at the top of the pedestal, you know, being one of the best action film series ongoing today oh my god i'm just thinking about everything that i just saw and it's just mind-boggling i loved almost every minute of it um you know i just have a few issues that we'll get into the the spoiler territory uh particularly with one character uh i don't know the actor's name i'll try looking up her name but <clears throat> it's the you seen if you've seen the trailer you know it's the actress with the short hair uh, she is the villain. She's the high table villain, I guess, for this film. And I just felt like her character was just so bland and meh. And they honestly could have gotten anybody to play that part. Because... <laughs> and, and, and her voice was kind of like... It was kind of irritating. What is her name? Uh, Asia Kate Dillon. The adjudicator. That's what they called her. She don't even have... Like a first name or nothing. Just they just call her adjudicator. Uh, I guess there's a following with this actress. I'm so unfamiliar with her. I never even heard of her. So she's like an unknown for me. But I'm pretty like I've seen people say, "Oh my God, Asia Kid D Dylan. Oh my God, she's in this movie. Yes, Slay Queen. You know shit like that." <laughs> and I'm just like, "Cool. I'm just here for Kenya Reeves, guys. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying I'm unfamiliar with her, so." But she has a fan following, I guess, from a show or, or something. And But she didn't impress me. I thought her character was hollow, was bland. Her, like, dialogue it was just... She was overacting, like, overselling. I don't know if that's really how she talks. But I felt like she was putting on, a, like, a phony way of talking. It wasn't even an accent. She was like... <laughs> I'm trying to give you an example. Uh, this is not spoilers, by the way. This is not spoilers. It's just, I'm just talking about her character. Like, I was made aware that John Wick was here, and he uh, violated these rules. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not editing that out. But it's true. She talks like a fucking Star Trek villain. <laughs> We're starting this review off in a great way, I know, right? But she really talks like... Like, what? Like, like she's uh, what, like one of Spock's people or some shit. Like, why is she talking like that? I don't know. That's, that's my biggest uh, negative for this movie. Let, so, we, let's get that out of the way. That. And towards the middle, it kind of slows down before it builds up momentum again. But that's it. Other than that, oh my god, the action is glorious. John Wick with those clean headshots. Just, bah, 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 you know, just racking up that kill count. Like, double kill, triple kill, kill tacular, kill in there. You know, fatality. Like, the, the John Wick is just... It's just the baddest mofo on this earth. I've always been a huge fan of Keanu Reeves. Um, yeah, I've been a huge fan of him since The Matrix, since Point Break. Always been a fan of his, and I'm glad that, you know, he, he has his own franchise that he can look back and be proud of. 
and he's getting that recognition and I love that he does his own stunt, stunt work. I mean, you should look up the YouTube videos of him training at the gun range. That's all of him, you know, just being so dead accurate with those shots and reloading and just, man, this dude 100% commits. I would love to meet Canaries in real life. He just seems like the coolest, most chillax, laid back, genuine Zen dudes like working in the Hollywood industry today. So my top my hat to you, sir. You are the best. Such a badass. Um, each action sequence just top this up with her. He's using books, knives, he's riding on a horse, swords, dogs, you name it. And Halle Berry, shout out to her as well. Halle Berry uh, sold me. I bought into the fact that she was a badass as well. So she handled her action sequences very well. I can tell that they that she trained. I don't know if they use like a, a stunt double for Halle Berry, but I really couldn't tell because the action was so quick, visceral. I mean, you could tell what's going on. So yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like I love the white shots. The, the cinematography is amazing. It's just so immaculate, and it's great to see all the action going around. They don't do those quick editing cuts and shaky camera all that stupid bullshit that most action generic action movies use nowadays those cheap tricks like to try to get away with them being you know like half-assing it or just being lazy in general so I, I appreciate good stunt work and choreography and this film nails it and I just love the world building with um, um, with the world of John Wick you know with the Continental uh, I love all of it. Ian McShane as Winston's great seeing him back. He's such a great character. And we get even more additional characters that just build up this world. And yeah, they hinted at a fourth one. And I would definitely be down for a fourth one. So this is already three for three. Strong trilogy. Go see John Wick. Chapter three. It is well worth it. Just <laughs> This is a great action franchise. If you have not even seen none of the John Wicks, do yourself a favor. Start watching them right now and then go watch the new one immediately. You will not regret it, especially if you're an action film junkie like me. You appreciate good action, stunt work, and just just want to see your jaw drop when John just nails all these people with headshots after headshots. It's just it's amazing. <laughs> it really is. So this one gets a 9 out of 10, a strong 9 out of 10 for John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum. It's a blast. It's a good time. It may be my second favorite film of the year, with number one being Avengers Endgame, of course. So there you have it. Uh, I don't know if we hit the five-minute mark yet. I, I, I usually could tell because the yeah, new program, <laughs> new camera program. The old one used to tell me when. Anyway, spoilers, spoilers. Here we go, spoilers. Let's talk some spoilers, people. And I guess we'll try to do chronologically in order. But sometimes I'll just be all, all over the place, but. Yeah, so if you haven't seen the movie, go watch it. Spoilers, here we go. Three, two, one, excommunicado. <laughs> so that's how we we pick up right after the second one ends, which is great because I saw the second one last night, so it was great, you know, as a refresher scene that this picks up immediately. John Wick is on the run, uh, <laughs> and, he's, and they're counting down. At least Winston gave him an hour, I believe, to, uh, you know, try to get away in New York City, and it's pouring down rain. He's running with his dog. He puts him in a taxi. He sends him to the Continental, which is a smart move. Because we don't want... we can't. I can't handle seeing another dog die. Especially after John Wick 1, man. That was just... Fucking Theon Greyjoy, man. <laughs> Anywho, uh... Yeah, we got our first fight sequence when he goes to the library to retrieve some items. Uh, some of those gold Continental coins. And he, he had it... Uh, hidden away in a book in the library and also he had one of those uh, those blood tokens where you you put your blood and like the blood oath token that's what it is and like a cross so we get like three items that he takes and then there's this is huge Russian dude huge like the skinny scrawny tall version of the mountain pretty much and <laughs> he's like Fuck it, I can't wait, John Wick. I must kill you right now. And then, you know, John... I love how Kinnear Reese just delivers his lines. I just, I just love the way he talks. He's just so smooth. He's just like, Are you sure you want to do this? Because, you know, I killed a guy with a pencil before. I'm just saying. 
Well, he didn't say that, but <laughs> he's like, are you sure? You know, and they just go at it. Holy crap. I mean, that dude should have been a boxer because his reach is ridiculous, that Russian guy. Uh, <laughs> but he, he kills him with a book, and I was just like, in awe, like, this is, okay, here we go. Like, Punisher mode activated. <laughs> That's why I'm wearing my hat. Very fitting for this review. Anyway, uh, yeah, so he gets stabbed, and he goes to, he has like 10 minutes left, I believe, or 5 or something. Um, yeah, and he goes to see this doctor, underground, you know, doctor, and he tells him, like, hey, you know, I'm happy to help, but once it's the countdown is over, can't help you no more. That's exactly what happens. Like, three, two, one, excommunicado. I think the the bounty, oh, my God, it was four, $14 million? Million dollars. That's crazy. So, everyone in New York is out to get him. I mean, but, you know, me personally, I wouldn't. Because only if I knew the knowledge of John Wick. Like, if I heard those stories, I'd be like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's the boogeyman. You know, $14 million or not. Nah, I'm good. I wouldn't even try. I'd be like, nope. I'll just holster my weapon. <laughs> anyway. Yo, this shit just picks up. Uh, he goes into like this like pawn shop first. Where they have all these antique revolvers. And that was great. He was trying to assemble them together. And he, he, he got one shot off with a cowboy revolver. That was great. And they were just started fighting with hunting knives. And it's fucking nuts. And then we go out in the streets where he gets on a horse. There was a great sequel, so he just started, like, smacking the horse's ass. And then the horses, you know, would just uh, react and just kick the dudes in the face. Just, like, drop kick them. Like, oh, like, oh, man. <laughs> How did they think of this shit? It, it was great. Oh, they got so creative. I love it. So each action sequence got creative. It gave you something new to relish just to take in in the moment. You're just like, what? How can they top this? And they, they do, they do, they keep on. Um, so we get to Angelica Houston's character. She's uh, called the director. Um, she has like this ballet studio, and it is implied that I guess John was an orphan. That's like a kind of like an orphanage that she took him in. And you see dudes wrestling at one point. You see like a bunch of ballerinas and dudes wrestling, and she actually comments saying, "Does this look familiar, John?" And so I'm like, oh, that's where John learned them throws. <laughs> he's always throwing them, them over the shoulder. Like, like he's trying to, like, get their gun or just get them, like, the fuck off of him. He's just like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> so I love I love that they, um, that we got to see that. That's how he learned his, uh, you know, throwing techniques and stuff, which is pretty cool. Uh, so he basically gets branded. Like, this whole world setup is so interesting like, it's so fascinating to me. Uh, yeah, each time they reveal more layers of this world, I'm just so in awe. Like, it's just so clever. It's just so imaginative that this underground city, as like, assassin world can exist. And he just totally buy it. And he gets branded. He gets safe passage. He goes to uh, Casablanca. Which I always thought was just a fucking movie, but apparently not. It's a, <laughs> it's a place. I know, right? Anyway, so we get there, and that's when we meet Halle Berry's character. And I, you know, Halle Berry, I would like to see more of her in roles because I always liked her. Um, some people don't like her for some reason. They they think she's like a bad actress, and I, I don't. I never saw her like that. I just saw her as one of those actresses that never got a, a big break. This just kind of fell off her her own stardom. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, even in that movie Kidnap, which I, I did not want to see, but somebody wanted to see it, so I had no choice. But she was the best part of that movie, even though that movie is so stupid. <laughs> just just dumb and ridiculous. She was the best part of that movie Kidnap, where her little girl gets taken because her acting is that good. And I could tell she, she got some uh, training, which was really helped sell her action sequences and her dogs oh my god that sequence where her dogs she's sicking the dogs on people and they're just like Whoop. <laughs> they're like on this resident evil zombie dog mode and they're just just so ravenous they're just jumping on top of like there's a scene where she tells him to go up and he just like leaps from <laughs> he leaps he like spider-man jumps the dog onto this dude's fucking face like just, what what? That, that was insane. 
that that was one of my favorite sequences. Uh, we got to see Braun from Game of Thrones. What? Uh, what character did he play? Holy shit! Well, there there were some fami a lot of familiar faces here. You know, so it was cool seeing Braun, even though he got his nuts chewed out by the dog. You shouldn't have shot that dog, Braun. Just saying, you know, you should, you should drag. <laughs> I was going to say some spoilers with Game of Thrones, but never mind. Uh, you know, because you know how people are. Oh, you seen Game of Thrones yet, so. Uh, but yeah, that's Braun from Game of Thrones. Uh, so it was cool seeing him. He had like a little brief uh, cameo, I guess you can call it. Brief scene uh, where John goes sees him because he's trying to see the the... High Council Lord or God or whatever. And tells him you got to walk in the desert and just fucking die. And hopefully the, the, this God answers your prayers. <laughs> and come save you and then you can talk to him, I, I guess. That was probably the, the, the one part where I was just like, huh? Just, you know, in logic. I, I Like, how does that work? Does How would they know where to find you? But anyway. But yeah, that sequence with the dogs was just... So stunning, so awesome. Just, I loved every minute of it. Uh, just nonstop bad guys. And, and Halle Berry was, yo, Halle Berry, my girl, kicking ass. Uh, she needs to be in the sequel, please. Uh, Halle Berry needs to be in the sequel. Okay, just saying. Like, you and John teaming up, that was the greatest team up, like, right there. It's <laughs> just so badass. Uh, just co op mode. Like, in video game. Co-op mode, just going around shooting stuff. It, it, like, that whole sequence felt like a video game, honestly. Like, the way they were just shooting and using the dogs, like, as a special attack or something like that. Or just building their meter up. Like, special attack! Sick hounds! <laughs> like, hit, press the A button, you know, just so the dog could rip their face off. Anyway, uh, yeah, it was great. Uh, so we get to that scene where he meets the High Council Lord, uh, whatever his name is. I... I who the actor looks familiar, but I, I don't know his name. Uh, so he tells him like, "Yeah, just give me your your fingers, your your fingers, your finger, to prove it to me that you're gonna kill Winston, uh, which is Ian McShane." So yeah, we get like this subplot sub with the adjudicator chick. Uh, she's like basically going up to these. Uh, she goes up to Lawrence Fishburne, who is the the Bowery King, that guy who has like the homeless, runs the homeless army people. Yeah, uh, she goes up to him. Yeah, seven days. She's basically like she's handing out fucking subpoenas, like eviction fucking notices. <laughs> like, that's the thing. That's why, I, uh, you know, her character just kind of irritated me. I just wanted somebody to shoot her in the face. I'm because <laughs> she just like she had that stank face the whole time, bland stank face, poor just god awful line delivery. And you're know, just like, why are you listening to this chick? Could could you have gone somebody else? You know what I'm saying? Like, what about it? Was Sophia Butella not available? Holy shit, why did you get her? I would have believed she was in a high power position. And she could have thrown down. She could have probably kicked John's ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had no problem with it being, you know, a female villain. But just not like this. It's so piss poor, like, her character. You know what I'm saying? Like Sophia Vitello, shit. Like, or Charlize Theron. Uh, then it would have been like an Atomic Blonde co crossover if that happened, though. <laughs> yeah, because I forgot. I think the same director who made Atomic Blonde directed the John Wick films, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Chad Levesky, or how, however you say his name. I'm looking it up right now, people. Uh, is it Chad? Chad Levesky? Anyway, but... You know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, so... He agrees to do it. Because, you know, like, uh, Winston, he's out. Because she's going around saying, like, You let John Wick get away. You And she goes to Angelica Houston's character, too. Oh, and she, she hires the most lethal uh, foe that John has ever faced. And I really like his character. Mark DeCosco's plays Zero. And he's like the sushi chef. And this, um, this, this motherfucker could make sushi out of you. Most definitely... <laughs> Um, I love he had like these League of Shadows type ninja assassins that all they used were swords and the the way they were murder people holy crap and you got two dudes from the raid films oh I noticed that right away my boys from the raid finally getting in on some action films that's what I'm talking about yo yeah Indonesia you know, show some Indonesia love you know you've seen the raid one and two 
Uh, those are the the those two play villains in the raid films, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, so I was so happy to see them be part of the crew. Sorry, allergies. Um, be part of his crew and Mark Dacascos. I'm familiar with him. Have not seen him in a movie like in, in ages. Jesus, allergies in ages. Last movie I saw him in, it was like early 2000s. It was with Jet Li. It was that DMX movie where he's like in the ATV fucking, uh, you know, a vehicle and he's just going through buildings. Uh, Cradle to the Grave. That that's the one. But he was the he was the villain there. He was much younger. But he still got he's still such a badass. So he was a great foil to John. Um, yeah. So just the middle portion, you know, just kind of like it slows down and. Um, yeah, it just picks back right up, Ellie. So, but yeah, that middle portion could could have sped up with the him in the desert, meeting these high mighty, you know, pharaoh gods of the high table, whatever. <laughs> so, um, you get we get back to New York, which is great because you know I was like, come on, let's go back to New York, and he does, and the shit gets crazy. Like as soon as he, gets, <laughs> as soon as he gets there, he's greeted by. Mark the Costco's character and his goons, and they just start going at him at the train station. That we get that glorious motorcycle sequence oh, where he's just like he's just knifing people. Oh, before that, the horse sequence. My god, did I skip over that? I'm sorry if I did. The horse sequence John Wick on a horse, being a total badass, just shoot dudes in the face. Just go, come here, do, 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 do. like <laughs> just come on. I know I've said. If John Wick on a horse shooting dudes in the face doesn't sell you, I don't know what will. But yeah, that was glorious. And the motorcycle sequence as well. Him just they have katanas on a motorcycle. Like how creative can you get? Like this is great, <laughs> you know. And he's just slicing dudes. He's slicing their tires. They're flipping, and this shit, it looks so real. I I I don't think none of it was CGI. It did not look like it. But I assume at least some of it had to be in post-production or something. Be because how in the hell did they survive that? Like the, the motorcycle when he like cut one tire off. Motorcycle when face first. Face first just nosedive into the asphalt. Into the pavement which was nuts. Like oh my god. And, and then we get to the continental shootout which is. <laughs> I love it. He gets there of course. I had a feeling he wasn't going to kill Winston. I'm glad he didn't kill uh, Ian McShane because, you know, Ian McShane had his back. So I, I love they stay true to their characters. And then the, the acquainter, or the adjudicator, whatever the fuck her name is, comes. And this is the part that irritated me. I was, She comes and she's like, oh, have you decided what to do? And, <laughs> and Ian McShane's just like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to give hand over my hotel to you. Like, no, fuck you. And she's like, okay. Have it your way. John Wick, have you decided what you're going to do? Yeah. I'm not going to do it. So, fuck you. <laughs> didn't say that at the end, but... You know, at this point, I'm just so fed up with her character. And she's like, let me make a quick phone call. Uh, like, why did you just shoot her, John? Shoot her in the face. And, and you too, Winston. Why, why did you shoot her with your golden Versace-looking fucking gun? Just, like, shoot her. And then the, the, the shit, the Continental wouldn't have been discommunicado or whatever, the disconstruction, whatever the hell they stamped on the, on the, on the ledger or whatever. Um, sorry, I'm just like so hyped after this movie. My, like, my adrenaline level is through the roof after watching this movie. Like, you know, if you need energy, fuck B12, fuck Red Bull, fuck shot adrenaline, crack, and cocaine. This movie just boosts it up, like... To a whole nother level. That's this is all you need. John Wick three. But on, watch John Wick three. Testosterone, the testosterone energy level will be through the roof, guys. Trust me. Uh, so yeah, and then after oh, she fucks off, and then we get like this crazy assassination squad rolls up with two buses, and they're armored from head to toe. So when they first go to the vault, they get their guns. You know, try to upgrade these guns. You know, use all the gold coins you collected by shooting everybody. I'm I'm thinking this is like a video game, guys, so stay with me. Uh, <laughs> so, all the kills you've gotten so far, you racked up all those gold coins enough to upgrade to a huge-ass assault rifle with two clips and infinite ammo, whatever. <laughs> and he gets, like, two big-ass uh, pistols with huge, like, magazine capacities. I think he says an STI. 
I'm, I'm a gun uh, aficionado. I, I, I like going to the range, shooting guns for fun and stuff. So I'm familiar with some guns. But yeah, he had the AR-15 with the EO Tech on. What? It was nice. <laughs> and I like, uh, what's his name? Um, his name is Sharon? What the fuck? Well, the actor's name, uh, the black guy, Lance Reddick. Basically, he's Winston's like bodyguard, the dude with the glasses. Really like his character as well. I like that he went to to fight as well, help out. But yeah, when they first come across that squad, John's trying to shoot him, and the, the, the bullets are deflected. I'm just like, how are you gonna kill him? And you, basically, you gotta do the chin ups. You know, you have to shoot in the chin or in the throat. It, it was crazy. And I love that scene when they just go back. Like the level was over. <laughs> the first wave was over. So round one, wave finished. Round two, like, what the fuck? I, I love it. You could literally see this movie, like, in a video game lens in the format. <clears throat> yeah. So they go back to the vault. They upgrade <laughs> their their weaponry to shotguns now. Auto, Semi-auto shotguns with uh, this guy. What did he say? He, it's it's armor-piercing uh, frag shotgun shells that they get. <laughs> and I love it. And then they just start shooting, and their heads just fucking explode and like oh my god it's just oh, this fucking movie man this movie's so damn good oh man i just love every minute of it it's just shooting them their, their heads are just exploding you know they're, they're, they're like oh shit this armor does nothing now because they got those rounds um yeah and then we get to the fight scene with uh mark de costco and the raid crew <laughs> i love those raid uh two guys from the raid they look like they're brothers they're probably brothers in real life because they look so similar. I thought they were twins at first. Uh, but yeah, I love the set designs, the locations, just so much detail. Oh, it's so good. It just looks, the, the color scheme, the palette, everything about it. it just, I love the way it's shot. The cinematography, the, I can't even talk. The cinematography is just, mwah, it's just stunning to look at. Uh, you know, when they're like kicking John through the mirrors and shit. And John is just taking the hits because he has to block the knives. So just a little attention to details. I really like that. He's just taking the hits, blocking the knives and the swords. And I like that moment when the two brothers, like, you know, like, lift them up. And they're like, oh, hey, he's getting old and rusty. And they offer to let, help him up again. He's like, no, here we go. <laughs> he takes his bell. He's like, let's go. Let's go, fam. What? what? Like, the little Indiana Jones, you know? <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Mark DeCosco has some funny lines, too. He, he sat right next to him in a, in a Continental. <laughs> and you're just like, what's up with this dude? And he basically pulled the, like, um, the, the arc, the story, the character arc of the bad guy in Logan, uh, who was played by Boyd Holbrook, I believe. Remember in Logan, he was a huge fan. He's like, I'm a huge fan of you, Wolverine. Well, same thing with Mark DeCosco's character. He was telling John... Like, I'm a huge fan of yours. You and me, we're like, we're like this. We're alike. You know, I'm a cat person, but <laughs> I just, I love his line delivery. He was pretty funny. He had the funniest lines. Uh, yeah, and then we get to this showdown between them two, which was, oh my God, so good. And you can tell Kenny Reeves is getting winded a little bit. He's getting a little tired. I mean, I don't blame him, but I like that. I like that. It's just, you're just so in the moment with his character. And it's just so realistic. They don't cut away, you know, like, you're just in the moment with him, and he's so physically exhausted, but he just keeps on getting up. I love that. I, I, also, at first, I was just—it was a little bit comical the way they were like disappearing, like it just like Ooh, like one the camera cut like pan this way, and then we'll pan back to uh, the bad guys. They would just disappear because they got those like ninja she legal shadow skills. <laughs> they pull like a Batman, like hey Batman, you want to go grab? Oh. He does that. Yeah, so I like that John Wick did that as well towards the end. So he kills all Mark the Costco's. And then we yeah, you know, we get to like the parlay and then I I, I feel like this chick should have died. The adjudicator chick. Like why didn't she die? Whatever. Uh she pardons Winston, he shoots John, and this is where I was like, Okay, was this part of the plan or was it just like spontaneous in the moment? Did Winston know he would survive? I don't know. It feels like he did betray John, but in a way, he knew that he would survive. But still, he he still betrayed him in a sense. I don't know. Um, but it's like he has no choice. Maybe John will will understand. I hope John doesn't 
go after Winston again because then it'll be like, well, you should have done that in the first place, John, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, so he, like, shoots him. And he had that bulletproof, like, uh, Armani suit on or whatever, like, that nice black uh, death suit on that he always has. <laughs> always rocking, rocking the black tie, the black suit. I, I love it. Um, and he goes off the building, and then they bring him to Lawrence Fishburne. And he's like, are you pissed off, John? And John's like, yeah, I'm pissed off that we're not going to make enough money like Endgame. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I hope it does. No, I hope it does. I hope it makes enough money. It deserves to be number one in the box office. If anything's in a, you know, top Endgame in the box office, it should be John Wick Chapter 3 and not Aladdin. Fuck that, you know. But anyway. Here's my recap and review of John Wick 3 Parabellum. Parabellum means prepare for war, by the way. Winston uh, comments that. I I knew it meant something, and I, I'm glad he said it in Latin. It means prepare for war. And holy crap, <laughs> this was war. Uh, so, yeah, we're not done yet with John Wick. There, there has to be a fourth one. I hope in the fourth one they ended, though, because I, uh, I thought this one would end it, but... I'm okay with them making one more, and then that's it. I don't want them to be, you know, a fifth or sixth, and then it'll be just, like, Fast and Furious. They'll get too fucking ridiculous, you know? Like, John Wick in space, like, just <laughs> shooting ninja astronauts. Like, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I had a good time. This is a 9 out of 10. I enjoyed it more than the second one. Uh, I still think the first one is my favorite because it had more of that dramatic punch. It was more personal with the dog. It had that revenge aspect. This was more of a just survival. Um, so I always loved the first one the best. So this this would be second. The third one would be second and the second one would be third. In, in my ranking, how I would rank them. There you have it, guys. That's my uh, review for John Wick Chapter 3. I think I said this would be quick, but I guess it wasn't. I, I don't know. But thanks for watching, as always. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you're new to my channel. Uh, give this video a like if you want. Hit that notification bell as well so you can stay tuned for any videos that I upload. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.